Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'd like to talk about the DAX format function. Now, I use a format function a lot to present the way that my numbers and my dates and other things look on my screen. There is nothing much to teach in the format function. Uh, there are a couple of tricks, although, that I'd like to share with you that can enhance the way your numbers and your dates look on the screen. So let's just take a look at the syntax of the format function, which is really simple. And then let's just take a look at a few tricks that you can actually apply in your DAX format function. All right, in terms of syntax, the format function has just got two parts. The first part is what would you like to format, the value that you'd like to format. And the second part is the string that how would you like to format. Whatever string you write is applied to the value and it starts to appear the way that you have written the string. Any which ways you will understand better when you take a look at a couple of examples. Now, in terms of examples, I've got you three broad examples. The first leg of examples is from formatting numbers inside Power BI using format. The second leg of examples is formatting dates and the third one is formatting booleans which is like true and false one and zero and that sort of stuff let's just take a look at a couple of interesting examples or tricks using the format function all right, let's just pick up the first example of formatting a number as 1000. Now I have written 1000 here, but over here you can write a measure that actually gives you another number. You can also write a column that is totally okay. But for now, let's just format a simple number as 1000. Sometimes people would want to kind of show 1000 in a comma separated format. That means I'd like to have one comma and then three zeros after that. How do you actually do that? What you can do is in the string part, you can actually write zero comma zero, and this will actually provide commas in the way 1000 looks on the screen. Sometimes people also want to have commas as well as decimal places inside of their numbers. So what you can actually do is if you want to have a decimal along, you can write the decimal and then zero after that. And this is actually going to give you a comma as well as decimal places. Even if it doesn't have a decimal, it's going to mandatorily have a decimal zero. Even if you have two decimals, so if this number is not uh, 1000, it's like 1000.45, it's still going to kind of have a decimal in the end, which is kind of rounded off to one decimal place. There is also custom formatting available in Power BI format function, which is exactly the same as Excel custom formatting. So if you work with custom formatting, you understand that there are four parts there. We have a positive format, we have a negative format, we have a zero and we have a text. The same actually applies in the format function as well. So what I could do is let's just say that this is a positive number and I'm just going to cancel these two decimals right here. And if this is a positive number, I just want to show it the way it is. So just want to show it the way it is. And this is going to show me as a thousand. But if this is actually a negative number, what I can also do is I can actually start to write the negative format inside of the same string. So I can say that the negative number is going to be appearing in a bracket. So in the bracket zero, zero actually means any number. And this is going to actually give you a negative number formatting in case the 1000 is negative. So as of now, this is going to not going to make any change to 1000. But just in case, if your calculation actually gives you a negative output, this is actually going to format this particular negative 1000 into a bracket. And you can kind of enhance that. So if you really want to have a decimal after that, so you can write a decimal here as well. And you can have a comma here as well and things like that. You can also make it interesting by adding a tick mark or a cross sign in your positive negative formats as well. So let's just say that if the number is positive, I'd like to have the number as well as a tick mark sign. So here uh, in the positive number before the semicolon, I can actually write zero, I can write a little space and I can write a tick mark sign. And the tick marks can be taken from different websites like an emoji and you can paste that tick mark here. I've already got it here. I'm actually going to copy that particular tick mark, which I already have copied that. And I'm just going to come back to my measure and I'm just going to paste that right here. And if that's a negative number, I want to have that in the brackets, but after the brackets end, I actually want to have a cross. So I can actually go back here and I can actually copy that particular symbol and come back to my measure and I can actually paste that right here. Now what's going to happen is that it's actually going to show you a negative sign because that's what you have specified. Just, just like the way it happens in Excel, there are four parts to any custom formatting. There is a positive, there is a negative, there is a zero and there is a text. Now if after the second semicolon, I apply a third semicolon within the inverted commas. Now I start to format zeros in case this 1000 actually becomes a zero and I can just write a dash. So if this 1000 actually becomes a zero at any point in time, this is actually going to follow the third part here, which is coming in the end and it's going to write a dash. So this is a pretty nice way of formatting your numbers using the format function. 
All right, after we have taken a look at how do you actually format a number using the format, let's just take a look at a couple of date examples. So in terms of the input, I've changed the input from 1000 to an actual date. Use the date function here and the date that I'm getting is 20th of Jan 2020. And as of now, the string is empty. So let's just format this string in a couple of ways. So if I just end up writing three Ds, I'm actually going to get the day of the week. So this is 20th of January was a Monday in 2020. And that's what you get. If you end up writing four Ds, you will get the full word as Monday that's what you get and similarly if you write three m's you will end up getting the month in an abbreviated format three letters j a n if you end up writing four times you're going to get the full thing as january the same applies to the week so if you just write a single w it actually gives you that monday is which day of the week by default the week starts on sunday as per this formatting and monday is counted as number two if you end up writing two W's, it'll tell you that 20th of January was which week of the year. So it's actually the fourth week of the year and that's what you get. You can also find out quarters by just writing a single Q here. This is very, very helpful, especially while you're creating a date table. You can just write a Q and since the 20th of January falls in the first quarter, it actually gives you a number one. If you actually want to show it in a better way, you really want to show it like Q1 and Q2, what you can do is you can actually play a trick, write a like a backslash here and then write Q. If you write the backslash and whatever you write after the backslash is considered as a literal character. It's just going to write Q as it is. And then Q stands for the quarter. So it's actually going to write Q1. You can also change the way it looks. You can also kind of include ears in here. So you can just write four times Y. This is actually going to give you the year as well as the quarter. That's an interesting way of presenting dates. All right, lastly, let's just take a look at how do you actually format a Boolean using the format function. So in terms of input, you have to have a number here and the number can be either a zero or anything other than a zero. In terms of the string, you either write a yes or a no. And if the number is zero, it actually picks up the no. If the number is anything other than a zero, it actually picks up a yes. So right now the number is 10, which is anything other than a zero. Hence, it actually picks up a yes. You can also change that and you can actually make it a zero. So once it becomes a zero, you can actually make it as a no. Similarly, you can also write instead of yes or no, you can also write on and off in case you want to have that. So I'll write on and then off and you will have an off because it's a zero as of now. It actually becomes a one. It will become an on. You can also write a true and false here and that will also do the trick. Just remember the on will come first and the true will come first and the yes will come first in terms of these two options. All right, that was all about the format function. These are just a handful of the strings that I have mentioned in the video. I have a detailed list of the strings that are applicable to the format function mentioned on the blog post. The link to the blog post is there in the description of the video. You can actually take a look at that. And of course, if you want to learn DAX right from scratch, build up to a level where you start solving more complicated, more real time business problems, I highly, highly recommend that you check out my course on mastering DAX. Thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.